Good morning, grade sevens. This lesson corresponds to cycle 20 and line 83 in our red books, where we learn how to complete our B-flat concert scale. Up until now, every class, we start our class by playing a B-flat concert returning scale using the first six notes of B-flat concert. That means for concert pitch instruments, we play from B-flat, and on the last cycle, we play B-flat all the way up to G and then back down again. B flat instruments, we play from C all the way up to A and back, alto saxes, G up to E and back, uh, French horns, F up to D and back. However, we know from experience that this sounds somewhat incomplete. If I was a flute and I play from B flat up to G, it really feels like you're missing something, doesn't it? So let's figure out today what it is that we're missing. We're missing two notes, and the last two notes of the scale are as follows for each of the instrument families. Concert pitch instruments, the seventh note is a natural, not a flat, so I put the natural in the brackets, a flat blocks E flat concert, and then B flat. B flat instruments, the seventh note is B natural. Not B flat, B flat blocks E flat concert. And then C. Alto saxophones, we're looking at F sharp and then G. And French horn, we're looking at E, and it's going to be E natural because E flat belongs to E flat concert. And then F. So, three observations. The first one is that there are eight notes in our B flat concert scale. The second observation is that the first note, so lowest note, and the highest note share the same letter name. And last but not least, we don't skip any letters in this, uh, in this scale. So B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A natural, B flat, we didn't skip any letters there. C, D, E, F, G, A, B natural, C. We didn't skip any letters. They're in alphabetical order with no skips. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E natural, F. And that sounds like this. And if I decided after this to turn around and come back down like it does in the first five bars of line 83, it would sound like this. For every instrument except for clarinets and bass clarinets, you're going to experience a continuous upward motion in your pitches on the way up, and then a continuous downward motion in your pitches on the way back down. Clarinets and bass clarinets, you don't. If we take a look at line 83 for you, we can see that after the F in the first space, we drop way down to the G underneath the second legend line. So after F, we're going to drop down to a low G. And low G is thumb 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So your overall sound is going to be this in the first five bars, clarinet and bass clarinet. <laughs> still the same sound, it's just you have that drop down between F and G. Listen one more time. The next feature of line 83 is a musical device called an arpeggio. So if we look at the second line of line 80, of number 83, in bars 1 and 2, you can see that nice little word on the top, arpeggio. And arpeggio is a, is a musical device that involves playing the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of the scale. So for my concert pitch instruments, it would be playing B flat, and then D, and then F, and then back down. For my B flat instruments, it would be C, E, G, and back down again. E flat instruments, it would be G, then B, then D, and back down again, F, A, and C, and back down again. The reason why we do this is because it sounds good. It's 
sounds like this. Let me try that one more time. The last thing you need to know about line 83 has to do with the chord section. You can see that almost everybody, with the exception of the low end, has a divisi. Everybody but the flutes, be consistent in your approach, but you can play whichever note you want in the divisi. Flutes, I'm going to insist that you play the higher notes in the divisi. That way you can get some practice playing those higher notes. Remember, good firm embouchure and aim your air up. Good luck, everybody.